Hello from Olympia, Washington in the United States. My name is Cable Green. I am the Director of Global Learning at Creative Commons, and welcome to Open Education Week. My life's work is helping educators and policymakers understand how the internet, increasingly inexpensive computing, the affordances of digital content, and open licensing have made it possible for the first time in human history to share the world's knowledge with everyone for a marginal cost of zero. For over 10 years, the global open educational resources movement has worked on leveraging these opportunities to ensure students and teachers have no cost, legal access to courses, textbooks, and research. If we get our policies right, everyone in the world can attain all the education they desire. It will require we share the educational resources we produce and that we spend our limited public funds wisely. The Cape Town Declaration begins, quote, We are on the cusp of a global revolution in teaching and learning. Educators worldwide are developing a vast pool of educational resources on the internet, open and free for all to use. These educators are creating a world where each and every person on earth can access and contribute to the sum of all human knowledge, end quote. While this is true and very exciting, we have a policy problem. Most policymakers don't understand 21st century technical and legal tools and how they can collectively enable this global learning opportunity. Understanding the opportunity afforded by wielding these tools is key to even understanding that the dream is possible. Without this understanding, policymakers can only make decisions within existing frameworks and within existing business models. So, why focus on open policy? Well, first the policy. Publicly funded resources are openly licensed resources. And while there are many open licenses, publicly funded education resources should use an open license that allows the public to revise, reuse, remix, and redistribute those materials. For the purposes of open policies that contribute to the commons, I define policy broadly as legislation, regulation, and or funder mandates. If we are going to unleash the power of billions of dollars of publicly funded education, research, and scientific projects, we need broad adoption of open policies by all nations. Why focus on public funds? Well, quite simply because that's where the money is. This is why open policies are so important. If we get this simple idea right, open education sustainability will cease to become an issue because A, there will be plenty of public funding to build and maintain all of the teaching, learning, and research resources the world needs, and B, open becomes the default and closed becomes the exception, and the bar for receiving an exception should be high. What is possible with open policies? It's real simple. Large amounts of publicly funded educational and scientific resources could be made available under an open license or placed directly into the public domain. We need to take policymakers back to first principles. One, efficient use of public funds to increase student success and access to quality educational materials. And two, everything else, including all existing business models, have to be secondary to that first goal. What is our end game? Well, our winning argument is policymakers will want the highest return on investment and impact of their public investments. And two, our open policy goal is open policies adopted by all nations, national agencies, states, provinces, systems of education, institutions, departments, and individual creators. I will be hosting a live webinar during Open Education Week to explore this topic further. I hope you will contribute to the conversation and join me in that webinar. Please join me in celebrating Open Education Week. Please attend sessions and invite your friends to join this global movement at openeducationweek.org. And I'll see you online.